Hi gaming guys and we've got another special projects custom build for you today and keeping in with the kind of Tommy Kyra special projects theme of this week this time it's a GT1 or GT2 style build more of a GT1 car really for the Tommy Kyra ZZ2 now it's already pretty close to a racing car in the way it performs but we've just taken that to a bit more of an extreme kind of turned it into a bit more of a rear wheel drive biased vehicle as a racing cut or a racing version would be and this is for the 600 pp level we haven't gone crazy as far as power and weight gone for what you'd expect from a gt1 spec vehicle so around 650 horsepower around a thousand kilos from the 90s era gt1s like the tvr speed 12 the lister storm etc so visually, much like the Tommy Kara ZZS JGTC car, which I did earlier this week, I haven't really done that much to it visually. It's not a premium, so there's not that much that you can do. I've fitted the white rims, of course, the custom wing, and the black paint, and that's about it. So we'll go straight over to the mechanical garage for the tune setup, and then take it out to the Le Mans to see how it performs as a race car. So for this GT1 style build, as I said, we haven't gone crazy with it because with the Tommy Kyra you can very easily go to silly power and ultra low weight. And that's not a bad thing, of course, but you can't get all of that in the 600 PP level. So I've gone for racing soft tyres. For the brakes, I've increased the rear balance to six. That's not a necessity, though. You don't have to do that. For the suspension, we've got the ride height as low as possible. Springs we've increased up to 1350 and 1450. The dampers and anti-roll to five all round. Neutral camber and tow because you just don't need it on this car. We'll come back to the gearbox. For the diff we've got the lowest initial torque. Acceleration we've got on the maximum on the rear, 20 on the front. And braking to 10 on the front and 15 on the rear. As far as the torque split... As I said, I've gone for slightly more of a rear-wheel drive bias on this car, so we've gone for a 1090 split on that. We do have an oil change, as far as power goes. We've gone for the high RPM turbo, and then reduced it down to 88.7 horsepower, or percent horsepower. Downforce we've got on the maximum, we've got the full weight loss package, and then an 80 kilo ballast, which we've put 8% towards the rear of the car to just improve that weight distribution. Because it is already 50-50, but sometimes 50-50 isn't necessarily the best. If you can loosen up that front end a little, you can actually sometimes improve your turn in into corners. So, coming back to the gearbox, you want your auto setting on 230. Then for the individual gears, we've got 3.1, 2, 1450, 1100, 875 and 700 with a final drive of 3.7. And that's it overall for the mechanical setup. So now let's finally take it out to the Le Mans to see if it can actually cut it as a race car. Now overall, I've gone for kind of a center mix with this car. It's not totally geared towards power and performance in a straight line, but at the same time, it's not totally geared towards low weight handling and grip. It's designed to be kind of a mix of both. A decent amount of performance in a straight line whilst retaining the fantastic cornering ability that the car is known for and for the most part it manages that now as far as what tracks it's designed for we are here of course at the Le Mans where many people do love to use the Tommy Kyra but overall this isn't designed for any specific track this is just designed to be a 600 pp GT1 spec tune for pretty much any track so it can get around here in around 3 minutes and 40 seconds or less. And that's with the chicanes, without NOS, and not a top speed tune in effect. So pretty impressive overall. But at the same time, you can then take it to the Nuremberg Ring and run around a 6.5 minute or less lap. You can take it to other tracks and get post good laps there. It's designed to be a decent tune representing a GT1 spec for a fictional race car which you can use on a wide variety of tracks as you would need to with a real GT1 car. Real GT1 cars of course aren't just designed for one or two tracks they're designed to compete on a wide variety of tracks so that's what I've gone for with this model. So if you decide to use this GT1-esque tune for the ZZ2 obviously I hope you find it fun 
and it's definitely a highly competitive tune on a highly competitive car. And if you're new to the channel and would like to keep up with tunes like this as soon as they're released, be sure to hit subscribe down below. And as always, thanks for watching.